Welcome back to the Intangibles Podcast. I am one of your hosts, Xavier Tarr. Today we are with Rob for the last time as we get into a little bit what he's been up to since graduating RIT, as well as going through some of the more specific things that Tiger Tales has done to attract new members, show other people that this is the place to be. Some of them were wildly successful, while others were not, and we're going to go through that. So, let's dive in. Since you name dropped Google, tell us what you've been doing uh, after RIT here. A couple of different things. Google, I've been at Google the, the, the whole time since leaving RIT as my full-time kind of role. So I'm on a team, we do like applied machine learning. It's geared towards fraud detection, but within that space, there's like a lot of interesting problems on like identity and keeping things safe and privacy and all these types of things. So I've, I've, I've had a hand in all of that type of things like modeling and infrastructure and privacy. I'm, I'm now have a, a small team that I'm the team lead for. We're doing a lot of um, analytics. Uh, you know, how do we, how do we really understand our user journeys uh, specifically where we cause like users, you know, to have some pain, right. Or, you know, mm. they aren't enjoying themselves on the platform or, or, you know, they're going through flows that are, we could do better about, right. So we're trying to like gather metrics on those types of things and figure out ways to better help our users and despite what people think you know in a very privacy conscious way to do this right like you know make sure that users have the controls over their data and let us know like what they want and and when they want it um that type of thing so that's what i've been working on at the google side i've also done a bunch of stuff on the side with like cybersecurity, which has been an interesting journey since alex you know mentioned it i guess i i, I think he's right i do kind of like building communities so i I started out giving kind of classes to um, veterans in cybersecurity. Facebook had this cybersecurity university that I helped work with. And, and we basically transitioning veterans or, or folks looking for kind of new career paths. We'd help them get started and, and kind of give them entry level training on technical topics. From there, the Marine Corps Reserve didn't have a defensive cyber kind of capability. And like I said, I'm, I, I was active duty Marine before RIT. So I helped build out this this team and it's now, it's been going pretty, pretty well. There's a lot more bureaucracy and like red tape and like funding types of problems than like Tiger Tails. So we haven't had the Tiger Tails level of like growth yet, but we have a team in place uh, in, in Northern California out of the Bay Area and they're, and they're focused on um, defensive cyber um, in, in the Marine Corps Reserves. So I built that team up um, and that's been really, really cool to kind of see that grow. You know, it's, it started to, there's like a, I guess there's like a moment of lift or something where like, you're like, okay, this will survive. Mm-hmm. And Alex probably saw this, like you were there during Tiger Tales. There might've been like some moment where you're like, this will, okay, this is going to like last. So we, mm-hmm. you know, we are kind of now reaching that where it's like, okay, we've, we've gotten enough credibility from like the larger organizations and the stakeholders that this thing will survive and they see the value in this, you know, at some point in the future, maybe these, these like work streams will like merge for me. But but kind of applied machine learning and cybersecurity have been kind of my my focus areas since since RIT. Next, we're going to hear from Rob. Rob is from Google. <laughs> I asked Rob to how is he actively seeking to influence his community, and his answer was, "I like to build things and make products that unlock the power and promise of technology." to make our world a better place and connect us to one another. Rob. You went from the part where I said, except for when you're at a date and they're tindering to find someone else. <laughs> right? like, that's when technology goes wrong. Uh, but thank you for like churching it up. I really appreciate that. <laughs> Was there a moment that you saw in your journey of Tiger Tales, where you're like, this is gonna, this is gonna last. Yeah, so many. I'm trying to think about the earliest moment. I mean, certainly by the time I did the two-year master's program at RIT, and like by the second year, I mean, it was just this smash hit. You know, and obviously maybe I'm, I'm like biased, but I'm like, you know, this is like part of the RIT community now. You know, like, mm-hmm. like I think. And we had gotten some of those events with other clubs and organizations and, and the administration where 
it seemed like they really saw the value of this and they, you know, they felt like it was part of their, almost to, almost to a bad, I mean, I think at one point, it almost seemed like they were trying to like maybe take too much control. And I, yeah. I don't fully, Alex might remember some of these details better. It's been so long. But then, then it was almost like, oh, this is like this great thing. Like, you know, maybe we mm-hmm. should have more control over this. So, so it wasn't long before where it was like, you know, will the community accept this to like, the community needs to butt out, right? Yeah. <laughs> it, it was quick. There was actually other things at our RIT, which I don't know if they've done as well. But because Tiger Tales was going so well, and we were like, okay, not every, you know, there's a cap here, right? Like there's only so many people that can speak at a Toastmasters. If they get too big, it's no longer beneficial. We want space for people. So then in order to scale that better, we we're like, but what if we just took like some of the more concrete things that we can help people with and kind of give that advice, you know, cause they have a presentation coming up in their English class or they're doing their PhD thesis defense. Can we just give them some quick advice and help? So we started this thing called the presentation center mm-hmm. that was out of the main library. And this was Halim Preeti and I, again, with Preeti doing, you know, all of the, like, <laughs> Of course. Actual work, like get things done. Halim and I just like to, you know, talk and throw out ideas. But we had like a banner that we set up in the library and we had like a little area and we were trying to get like funding and, and administration support. And we talked to some professors and there were some professors that like give classes on this stuff. And mm-hmm. we're like, you know, IT is a very large school. You're not going to get everyone through your class, but maybe you can still like, you know, promote these ideas. I don't know if that one ever made it to lift off. It's one of these great ideas that just, you know, takes work and effort and you just have to find the right people that can keep it going. With Tiger Tales, it was like, it was really, really soon. There was definitely in the beginning a few, you know, a few meetings of like eight people or something mm-hmm. where we're like, you know, slightly concerned about this. I mean, it, I'm not, not to say that those didn't happen and, you, you know, you kind of feel a little bit nervous on reaching people. But in like hindsight, it's, it was destined to, to do really well because the RIT community has so much depth and so much incredible people there with incredible stories that you know how hard is it to, to get some of these people in a room to to talk with each other basically yeah so i don't know in hindsight i'm not worried but I, it's, that, that's also probably like survivorship bias yeah it's one of those things right like oh of course it's gonna be great alex do you remember a tipping point in particular so I think I actually wasn't there for a lot of like the introductory stuff because you're talking about meetings that were happening even before like the first demo meeting, like yeah. when you and Halim and Preeti and, and like Mervin are like trying to figure out how do we make this work. And then there was the demo yeah. meeting and it felt like after that it was inevitable yeah. because like we had jammed like 30 people into a room for that demo meeting. And I'm trying to remember when that was. It was probably like the beginning of the spring semester or trimester or whichever. Once that happened, it was, I think we chartered in April. So it was like four months of like solid meetings to try and figure out who of these 30 people are going to be the 20 people that are charter members for this club is, is really what it ended up being. There may have been some some like shaky times with kind of the executive board of the club trying to figure out, okay, let's let's have a demo meeting. I mean, you said it before, Halim was a force of nature and, and Mervin too. Like I, I remember yeah. Mervin was like March first, we're gonna charter. And every day after March first, he just became progressively more of a tornado of energy until it got done. I remember like in those those early meetings where it was like just a few of us. And I had just been like handed the treasurer position. Mm-hmm. Wasn't even really sure that like, I was like ready to like really give myself to this like effort. Right. Mm-hmm. And I remember Mervin saying, basically telling me like I wasn't doing a good job. <laughs> like, you know, it was one of these meetings. It was like, there was just like four of us there in the, the library, one of those little rooms in the library and him just like, just kicked me right in my pants <laughs> that I need to be all in on this and like really devote myself to this. And I was just like, Super offended, but then afterwards, like, kind of like, all right, no, he's, you know, he's right, he's right. He did not mess around. He did not pull punches. Irvin was was incredible. That's really funny. Yeah, <laughs> you're right. I do remember that demo meeting, and and after mm-hmm. that, it was I mean, there was just like no doubt. And I think I mean some of it is like like the kindling was already there, mm-hmm. right? And it took like the spark. And I mentioned the earlier. I mentioned the um, presentation center. 
you know, that, that felt a little bit more like swimming upstream. You know, you're, we're trying to find the, the kindling. We're trying to find the ownership that'll, that'll really make this thing thrive. But with like Tiger Tales, it just, it's just one of those moments where it just like explodes and it's just, and it just sets off so easily. And, you're, and it just seems like such a, an easy fit. And that's not super common. You know, I think, I think it's rare to, to have such a great fit for the community. Um, and so it was just so easy. And I say that in hindsight, I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. forgetting some of these, some of these moments where it, you know, it did feel kind of like, what is this? Is this going to work? You know, we got a slate of executive board members that are like brand new at this. None of us had done this job before. And, but in hindsight, all of that was, was not a problem at all. It was incredible. It's so interesting what you say about the presentation center, because that actually didn't end up um, continuing after, I mean, after a while it, it ended up shutting down. And what's so interesting to me is that comparing that to something else that we've done to try to promote the club sort of outside the club, because again, you, not everybody can do Toastmasters every week, but some people need that, that skill. The other thing that we've done is speech crafts, which is sort of like a abbreviated Toastmasters program where it's four Saturdays in a row and you give a speech every Saturday. We've done two of them so far. And like we posted it and immediately we had like 20 or 30 people sign up both times. Mm -hmm. And there's, there's a little bit of a funnel where people, they sign up and then they don't show up or they show up at the first one and they, they, they fall out. But from both of those speech crafts, we had... 10 or 15 people graduate, at least two or three of them went on to join the club after that. I think the difference is that the presentation center, it's missing the, the piece that we talked about, which is that that community that you've got, right. you, I mean, you've got a couple of smart people that are telling and experienced people who are telling you like, here's how you can make your presentation better, but really create like creating this microcosm of this community that hey, there's this, also this other community that meets every week that you can be a part of. It's, it's a really different thing. But the presentation yeah. center was not fruitless though, because one of the guys that got started at the presentation center was Isak. Isak came to the presentation center like two years before he joined Toastmasters, like getting slowly better at his, his master's presentations. And he was so shy. And it, he finally joins Toastmasters after a couple of years and he joins in the spring and that fall, he won the humorous speech contest. Really? Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. So, but how much faster his transformation was with the, these little presentation center things where, I mean, he's got three mentors right there helping him. It's the community that makes the difference. I think you're totally right we didn't fully analyze it like that at the time, you know, mm -hmm. we kind of were like, yeah, we, you know, we can help people and then bring them into the community. But, mm -hmm. but you're right that it, it just, it, it's, it was too transactional. Again, it's, it's like the, it's like the listening to the speech versus like getting on the stage. Right. It was just, it's just too easy. It's like too passive. You know, you feel like you did the right thing. You kind of can show up and, and get your, uh, you know, your few tweaks and then, and then kind of go home proud of yourself without doing the heavy lifting. Yeah. And I think the community is what keeps you honest with yourself. And, you know, I actually kind of struggled and like put in some, some growth time. Yeah. But you know, we, uh, we tried. Well, and, and not again, it wasn't fruitless and it, in seven years, you we're, we're bound to, to make a couple bad investments, but it turned that one definitely still was worth it. Just considering that story of transformation, it was absolutely worth the months of sitting in the library basement, hoping that somebody would show up. That's right. <laughs> and Halim, Halim, like, I had like a schedule. Yeah. If I didn't show up on my scheduled day, you know, I'd get I'd get an angry phone call. So I I really put my yeah, I put my hours in there. My unpaid mm -hmm. hours manning the presentation center. That's cool. The speech craft sounds really fun. Yeah. Every time someone suggests it that like I get this headache because it's like it's so much work, but then every time I actually go and do it, it it is so energizing to be around everyone realizing like, oh, I, I really can do this because everyone starts and they, they don't think they can and they get up and they give a table topic at that first meeting and everyone claps for them and they realize, oh, and just the light bulb going off in their head. It's just, yep. it's totally addictive. And, but you're right though, that it, it's so much work. That was actually what I thought too. I was like, this unpaid labor of love. Yeah. Just so much work for the organizers. But, but those moments, yeah, make it, make it worth it. 
that's what I'm thinking about. Like, yeah, like, you know, presentation center, this, just this desire that to see that these moments of, of, of transition for people, you know, where it all clicked. The last question I have for you, Rob, is what advice would you give to a new Toastmaster, either that just joined or is looking to join? Yeah, it, it's so easy to give this advice, but it's so hard to follow it where, you know, before you know it, you'll be done with your master's degree or, or undergrad or whatever you're doing at RIT. It's so easy to get wrapped up in like, you have this assignment due and then this project and, and you have four classes and, and all this. And all, by the way, you need to get your resume together. And all that stuff is important. I mean, that is like this big life goal stuff, but like, I don't remember any of it from my time at RIT, right? Like, I don't remember sitting there, like working on my resume or like these various projects I had to do. It's all so forgetful, but I do remember the, you know, the moments spent in Tiger Tales because I think of the, you know, the connection and the community and the, the moments of, of lift where you just, you know, are doing something you never thought that you could do or, or accomplishing something that you were so afraid of before, you know, those moments are just incredible, but also super fleeting and, and rare. So, you know, it's just it's easy to say, well, I'll skip this week or, or I'll work on a speech next month or, you know, I'll let other people go ahead of me. We have plenty of people that want to get up and speak during table topics. And, but I think just taking the time to really devote yourself and, and be present and, and just give it your all while you can is just incredible. And, and, and you're not going to get those times back. Like Google's flown by and, and now I have a wife and kid and all this stuff, right? It's just life is so fast. So, so just really cherishing those moments. Easier said than done. I, you know, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, a, I'm a victim. I, like everyone else, I, I probably skipped a Tiger Tales or two because I had a big project due and, uh, and I get it. So there's no judgment either. That's excellent advice. And you're right. It is so hard to stay present, especially life is busy, but those moments when you really let yourself be there, there's something magic and precious that happens when those light bulbs go off we have the opportunity for it to happen for us when we're at those meetings, but to see it happening for other people or to be a part of making it happen in someone's life, or like mentoring and stuff like that, to be present in those moments is, that's such good advice. You've been given this almost, you know, I don't know, this piece of gold or something where there's this hour where other people are doing the same thing, where they're also showing mm -hmm. up and being present. It seems because it's there, you know, it's, it's very easy to take it, you know, you're just like, oh, this must be, this must be easy to find. But just having a community that's, that's kind of already made there and everyone values like being present, everyone values sharing and community, like that isn't super easy to find when you get to the, you know, the corporate world or, you know, taking meetings at work and it's not the same thing. So, you know, someone kind of just handed you like this, this, uh, you know, gold bar or something and, and you're just, you know, like, ah, everyone has one of these. Right, like, and then later on, you're like, "Where did I put that?" <laughs> um, I feel kind of like I, I, I'm not a I'm not a Bitcoin person, but you know, you hear all these stories in the news where like someone bought like their um, sushi back in 2012 with like four Bitcoin, <laughs> and they're like, you know, now it's worth two hundred thousand dollars or whatever, but at the time it was like three bucks, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> like that, right? Like, like you know, don't don't blow your Bitcoin on sushi if you're so lucky this meeting is there and it's mm -hmm. waiting for you and you're just like, well, it'll be there next week. But like two years and not even, you know, however many weeks of that is, it's not a lot. And, and it goes really, really fast. Yeah. Honestly, the perfect way to end it, uh, mm -hmm. Tiger Tales being Bitcoin from two years ago. I, I love it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think Tell everyone's everyone. got the point that that's listening that engineer and techie people. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> hesitating to say that because i'm like ah, god i don't want to be like the silicon valley engineer <laughs> so i had to i had to you know you notice i prefaced it i typecast myself <laughs> <laughs> with that ralph thanks for for taking time today to just share your perspective um of everything mm -hmm. you definitely had lots of little gold nuggets in there for people to pick up um no thank thank you guys so much this is awesome mm -hmm. It's just so, so great to hear how, how great everything is going. And, yeah. and uh, you know, you're on my best over there. I'm really looking forward to seeing the interviews from, from all, all the old faces and friends.
Thank you again, Rob, for taking time out of your Silicon Valley schedule to do this interview, to show people the roots of Tiger Tales and your energy and enthusiasm took this club to new heights. Hope you guys all enjoyed. Join us next week for an interview with the man who inspired me to join through his powerful and vulnerable stories. And that man is Sabor. See you next time. So, we have a very special person in our life here at Toastmasters who just celebrated a birthday. If you'd help me welcome up our Vice President, Catherine, to come up here and receive this chocolate for her birthday. with me right after the meeting, so you guys will stick around for that, but thank you so much. Happy birthday, guys. She's also going to close, so I'm going to pass it over to her in one second. Before I do that, I do want to share one thing I want to take away from this meeting. Javier, you used recycle situation. I don't know if you, you said that. I'm going to like take that. Like I feel like that's like a life thing. Like It's not just, uh, I should recycle this water, this is a recycle situation. Like I think it's like, Hey Rob, like how'd you do on that exam? And it's like that was a recycle situation. <laughs> or like how was that interview? That was a recycle situation. <laughs> so I love that. I'm gonna take that. That was great. But with that, I'm going to pass it over to our closer, Catherine, to please come up and welcome her.